Hi, I'm Jody and hope you are doing well. Uh, this is Geeking with Jody and I wanted to show you a super cool trick I used yesterday to install OpenBSD on Hetzner clouds. Normally Hetzner doesn't let you to install OpenBSD. I was looking a place to install OpenBSD. First I saw Amsterdam OpenBSD group. They had great servers, but someone also pointed me that I can do this a uh, fun trick and I tried it. Later I decided not to have a VPS with OpenBSD at the moment because I wanted to run a specific program and I had problems compiling it. But in general, this is a very cool trick to know thanks to Lucas who pointed to it on the uh, IRC channel. So you are on Hetzner or wherever you get your cloud servers, but they don't provide a specific image. Here I want OpenBSD. You can do the same logic in many other uh, images. You create a server. I say, okay, create it in Frankfurt. These are, these are the only operating systems Hetzner lets you use. Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, CentOS, Rocky Linux, and Alma. We will use Okay, Ubuntu as our start. So I will use this one. Let's go with a cheap one. We will have a IP version 4. I will add my key here and I will name it Jadi Ubuntu. Test. Okay. So my idea is showing you how to install OpenBSD, for example, on Hetzner when Hetzner doesn't let you officially install it. We can kind of piggyback the server. So this is my IP address. I will connect to it. Let's run our terminal. Okay, we will do SSH root at this IP address. We'll connect to it. I accept this. Now I will be inside my Ubuntu servers, right? The point is, from the Hetzner, I got a, a VPS, VM, or whatever you call it. Uh, it has a CPU, for sure. It has some RAM, and it has a hard disk, HDD, or SDD, uh, or whatever you call it. In Linux, we will call it dev SDA, and the partitions will be uh, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Here we can go with a ls block. You can see that I have one uh, SDA hard disk, S uh, SSD or SDD? SSD or whatever you call it. Uh, it's virtual at the end. And I have some partitions there. How this computer boots? It has a CPU, it has a RAM, and it has Ubuntu installed on this. When it starts, it goes to this one and starts the normal boot process. If you are interested, I will link my uh, LPIC session about it. But how can, make, how can we make it to boot our open BSD? There are different images. For example, this image, if written to a disk, the install media will boot. So I will get this file, copy link address. I can say W get this. Now on the computer with CPU, RAM, and hard, which is uh, SSD hard, so it's dev SDA, we have Ubuntu installed. And I have an image. If this is on a media and this media boots a computer, uh, OpenBSD installation process will start. So I can write this to this. This is my computer. It has this SSD with this data. I write the same image on the same. I write the new image on the same heart. The command is dd. dd will let you copy some data from somewhere to another place. You can write images on, for example, your USBs or whatever. So I can say dd in file is install out file is dev sd tab says okay you have a 
and you have some partitions. I don't want the partitions. I want to write on the whole disk. Block size is 4K. This will make it a little bit faster. This is not the best solution because some other process may write at the same time on this part of the disk and break what I'm doing. But we will take the risk. It's quick. It's better to mount the hard read only. I will do a sync to make sure that this is written. Now I will reboot the machine. We can see from here. Okay, it's on. I will make it off. Okay, you will turn on your machine and will connect to its console because this is an installation media. There is no SSH, there is no remote access. Console works like you are just sitting behind the computer and having the control over the keyboard and the screen. This is a normal OpenBSD installation. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to install, upgrade, auto install, or shell. I want to install. Choose your keyboard. Next. People will say, oh, I'm a hacker, I'm installing OpenBSD. Next, 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 as any modern operating system. System's hostname, except some places you need to answer, OpenBSD. Network interface, VIO0 is good. It says, okay, IP version 4 address. Let's do it autoconf, default, we'll use DHCP. IP version 6, none. Network interface other than this, no, done. Just okay, okay, okay. Password for root, 1 to 3, I will turn the server off and delete it in a minute. Double check that. Start SSHD, yes, for SSH. Do you accept to run X? No, a different answer. Change the default console, no. Set up a user, yes. Very funny answer, no, really. What is the lowercase login name or no? Okay, I'm Jody. The drawback is you cannot have a user called yes on OpenBSD at least during Installation. Later you can create it. Full name for user Jody. For sure it's Jody. Password for Jody. 1 to 3. Again, 1 to 3. Warning. Root is dangerous. Do you want to be able to log in with root? No, I will log in with Jody. Time zone. Europe, Berlin. Which disk is the root disk? This is the fun part. SD0. So what happened? We had this computer. We had the device. In Linux, we called it dev sda. Here we are calling it sd0. It started with Ubuntu installed on it. We downloaded an image for OpenBSD, did it, the image on that. Now it's booting, and we say install the system on sd0. So, encrypt the root? No, we could have done. How should I partition it? This is the default for Hetzner for Linux. I say w. Whole disk is yours. You do it from scratch, auto. So this is the options. It creates them. Location of the sets. This is another important point. We had the disk, Ubuntu, D did the image. Now we said, okay, create new partitions on my disk and I want to install. But I don't have that image anymore. But OpenBSD can be installed from the internet. So I can say, Download your packages from blah blah site and install them here. Many systems can. You have to check your net installers. Now I don't have the data I did it. So I have to use a net installer or install from the network now. It says, how do you want to install? I can say from HTTP server. Which HTTP server? I don't know. Oh, proxy. None. Which HTTP server? I don't know. I will just ask a question. It says, I have this. Do you want to use any of these? I can say Q. And I want to use the number 20. Ah, this is the number 20. You want to use this? It's Toronto. Yes. Where are the files located? So I have OpenBSD. 7.5 installation files at OpenBSD CS Toronto EDU slash pub slash blah 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 blah. Okay, this is good. In any step, you can go with a exclamation mark 
and you will have a shell to use. So here you can mount a dev drive, download these by yourself in a directory and use them or whatever, and with an exit, return back to your installation. It says, I'm going to install these. This is the kernel, different versions of kernel, the base system, 7.5, comp 7.5, man pages, games, and some X stuff. So, done. Just use these set names. Now they are being installed. For the last time, because we have to wait, this was the hard, you had your CPU and everything. Hetzner installed something on the hard disk. We downloaded the image, did the image on this. So the next time system booted up, it used that image to boot up. Because we did that on the hard disk, so it started from here. And it's like a USB disk. And we are using the console because still we don't have SSH or anything. So we went through the process. Somewhere we said I want to install an SD0, which is the first hard disk here. So I had to tell it to download packages you want to install from the internet. Now they are being installed. I even partitioned all of these, as you saw, where we said whole disk and auto and they are being installed it's very quick because this is open bsd very 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 few packages and you can build up on them let's wait for this to install installing the games they are fun people just think that you have the bare minimum but you have enough games on the system and they have some songs, which they just add to them. They are cool. You can find most stuff here. Even on the menu, they have a section for songs and artworks. Ah, okay, it's here. Now installing the base system, and we will be done. OpenBSD is known to be one of the most secure operating system alive. They have lots and lots of systems to mitigate attacks. It's downloaded all of these, now installing them. Location of the sets. Do you have any other sets? No, I had enough. So it says saves in configuration, running the firmware update. This checks all the devices you have, PCI like LSPCI, and checks for everything, checks if you need to install any driver and will install them if needed for here, the AMD. And then it's relinking to create unique kernel. In many attacks, the attacker will find an overflow or something in your program. And since they have a exact copy on your program on their computer they can say okay from this if i jump this much i will have a routine which does blah blah so from after this overflow i create commands which jumps here and does this on openbsd being super secure it relinks to create unique kernel when it's linking the kernel to create the kernel each time it puts the parts in a random order and even in random distances from each other. So each time you're working on an OpenBSD on each reboot, I think, you have a unique kernel. So if even if someone could access some data inside your kernel and create a jump, they don't know where they should jump to create something useful of it. It's very, very, very nice idea. There is a book which says, uh, I don't remember the exact name, but the motto is Operating System for Practical Paranoids. Absolute OpenBSD. Okay, what should be done? We should restart. This will restart and we will have our OpenBSD on Hetzner after piggybacking a uh, Ubuntu system. Hetzner doesn't sell this OpenBSD, but now we have one. This is a very fun trick to know. Now you should be able to SSH. Connection refused because it doesn't let us to log in with this. I can log in with Jody. Obviously, 
the fingerprint is changed, I can say remove the previous fingerprint and log in once more. Because your system will keep the fingerprint of the each of each server. So you can do something like this and say, okay, please remove this from this file. Or you can edit this file and remove it manually. Now we can SSH and you will be in your password was 123. I will eliminate this server in a minute. So this is it. You are in your OpenBSD on Hetzner. This is cool. You can do a uname dash a. It's OpenBSD. Here you can do things like, uh, for example, package add vim. For sure, Jody cannot add packages. There is a similar command with sudo, which is much simpler. Uh, do as package add vim, which won't work because I'm not in etc do as conf. So you have to go with this one to three and say vi etc do as conf permit no pass jati now we will be able to do this fun fact something like tmax which i really like comes from uh open bsd people so you don't need to add it tmax is part of here which one to install i want the number six always and this is it I just wanted to show you this cool trick how to install something on OpenBSD when it's not available on your VPS provider. Again, thanks to Lucas who showed me this trick and have fun. Uh, the fun part is the default shell is KSH. Uh, package add NeoFetch. I have to learn about NeoFetch and see what program is replacing it. I think it didn't have an update in a long, long time, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. Have fun.